I wanted to take this time of ending um, and the month of thanks, Thanksgiving that we are to uh, give thanks. And then going into December, where we are remembering our Lord Jesus Christ, I wanted to take time to um, tell everyone that has been following me, uh, my ministry, whether it's through the prayer, uh, the prayer line recordings, it's through post, it's through messages, or it is through my motivational wisdom podcast. I wanted to take this time. I was just praying, what can I give the people? And I'm going to just pray. I'm going to pray scripture. And these are some of the uh, scriptures that the Lord has given to me. May it enlighten you in the word of God today. And to trust, to trust in Jesus Christ and not to lose hope and faith in our sovereign King of Kings. And so I'm going to start off with um, a prayer of remembered covenant, which is found in Psalms 89, uh, 33 and 34. So Lord, the covenant that you have made with your people, we pray now, uh, the Trinity and myself pray uh, that According to scripture, as you had promised King David, and since the saints have the lineage of King David, you have said, nevertheless, my love and kindness, I will not utterly take from him. We put our names in him and nor allow my faithfulness to fail. Lord Jesus, remember us today. Remember the covenant that you have made with us. My covenant I will not break nor alter the word that has gone out of my lips. Lord Jesus, we pray today that you remember the covenant that you have made with your people, the saints all across this world. Now we are praying the prayer of trust According to Proverbs, Proverbs today, Proverbs chapter 3, let us not lose trust in the Lord. Lord, you said to my son or my daughter in this scripture, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. May we remember the Lord's commands, His law, and may we trust in Him. Lord, please do not let mercy and truth forsake us. May we bind them around our neck. And may we write them on the tablet of our heart. And so, as the scripture says, find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. May the saints, my brothers and sisters across the world, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not to your own understanding and all your ways. Acknowledge him. And he shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. We pray this in Jesus' name. I pray the prayer of wisdom according to Proverbs chapter 8, verse 6 and 14, and James 1 5 through 8. Lord, we pray for wisdom in this way for our brothers and sisters across the world. And may they see through the lenses of Jesus Christ and begin to pray this way. Proverbs 8, chapter 8, verse 6. It says, All the words are with righteousness and wisdom. We're talking about wisdom. Nothing crooked or perverse is in them. 
verse 14. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. May this take hold of your people today. May they seek the wisdom of Jesus Christ like never before. And may they ask for the wisdom according to James. If they are lacking godly wisdom, the wisdom from the kingdom of God. It says, if any one of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach. And it will be given to you. But let him ask in faith. Let us have the faith that we will receive the wisdom from the kingdom of God with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Lord, we pray that the wisdom of Jesus come forth in Jesus' name. And we know that in the wisdom of God, there is no crooked or perverse way. And that the counsel of Jesus Christ brings understanding and it brings strength and revelation and knowledge. So God, we pray for wisdom. And let us not doubt when we pray for wisdom that we will receive it in Jesus' name, I pray. The prayer of truth. The prayer of truth. According to John 8 and 3, 8 and 32, the prayer of truth. I'm praying now the prayer of truth. Lord, help us all to walk in your truth. The truth from the kingdom of God, according to the word. John 8, 31 and 32, it says, And then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Lord, we pray truth today according to the word of God, the written word Jesus Christ, the engrafted written word of God, that the Holy Bible, the Holy Scriptures is truth. And we pray that we walk in truth, that we walk in the truth because it will set us free. In Jesus' name, the prayer of faith, the prayer of faith this morning, according to John 14, Chapter 14, verse 12 through 14. And then uh, John, chapter 16, verse 23 and 24. The prayer of faith. The prayer of faith. It says in John 14, chapter uh, verse 12 through 14. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also in greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. And whatever, whatever you ask in my name, the name of Jesus, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Lord, we pray that our faith is strengthened through this word. Jesus speaking to us. You did not say might, but you would. You will. I will do it. We pray according to John chapter 16, verse 23 and 24. And in that day, you will Ask me nothing, most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. So we reference God the Father this morning in the name of Jesus Christ, and we ask 
in Jesus' name. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, it says, and you will receive that your joy may be full. So, Lord, we pray this scripture of faith today for the saints, the believers all over across the world. You're speaking to your people today. So we pray this prayer of faith that our joy may be full. In Jesus' name, we pray the midnight prayer, the midnight prayer for the chains and bondage of the enemy to be destroyed in Jesus' name. According to Acts, Acts chapter 16. Verse 25 and 26, when Paul and Silas was thrown into prison and was chained in the bondage, it says that, but at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying, may we keep the spirit of the midnight prayer. Paul and Silas was praying and singing hymns to God and the prisoners were listening to them. Let this power of prayer come suddenly, we pray, from the power in prayer of agreement, believing that God will do it and break the chains of the enemy and open the prison doors in Jesus' name. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundation of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were open and everyone chains were loosed. Lord, we pray this midnight prayer for manifestation to come of this great deliverance. For the chains to be broken and prison doors to be open that has tried to hold the saints in bondage, not only the saints, but the saints' children, in Jesus' name. And all those that he is calling to salvation, let the manifestation of the midnight prayer come forth. We pray in agreement today. I agree with my brothers and sisters across this world. And the hymn that I sing is, Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. From the bottom of my heart, my soul says, Yes, Lord. Let the prayer come forth. Let the midnight hour of prayer be manifested. We pray the prayer of miracles and healing. According to Luke chapter 18, verse 35 through 43. When Jesus was passing by, he was passing by a blind, a, a blind man who had been sitting by the wayside. He heard a commotion going on. He was there sitting and begging, but he needed a miracle. And he heard the magnitude passing by and he asked the right question. What does this mean? And they told him that Jesus of Nazareth was passing by. And he cried out, and may we cry out this way, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And it says that they tried to shut his mouth. Then those who went before warned him that he should be quiet. But he cried out the more, son of David, have mercy on me. And it says, And Jesus stopped and commanded him to be brought to him. And when he had come near, he asked him, saying, What do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. And then Jesus said to him, Receive your sight. Your faith has made you hope has made you well. And he received his sight immediately and followed him, glorifying God. Lord, we pray the prayer of miracles and healing at this magnitude that it is manifested through us crying out 
at this blind man did. He asked the right question. He asked the right question. Lord, we're asking Jesus, do not forget us as you're passing by. And we cry out, Jesus, uh, son of David, have mercy on me. Make it personal. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. What are you asking the Lord for today? We pray this in Jesus' name. We pray the prayer of God's power in wealth and heritage. We pray the prayer of God's power in wealth and heritage. There's only three conditions. The first one is that you have to fear God. You have to be obedient, obey his commands, obey the voice of God. And the third thing, it says, tithe a tenth of your first fruits. But as I was studying this scripture, the Lord Jesus is saying that the tithing is not the only thing that's going to bring you this type of power and wealth and heritage. For we know the world has began to tie the 10% to churches, but are not living according to the word of God. This wealth, it is actually God's power of God's power of wealth and heritage. We are reading in Deuteronomy this morning. May this scripture enlighten every believer who the enemy has tried to hold in an oppression. May the word of God come forth with power. His power. The power. God's power of wealth. It says, let me just start in Deuteronomy. Just verse 1. Verse 1 and 2. And then ending in uh, Deuteronomy 18. And Every commandment which I command you today, you must be careful to observe that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swore to your fathers. A portion of verse 2, and you shall remember that the Lord your God, you shall remember the Lord your God. God, we pray this scripture of prayer of power of God's wealth and heritage. And verse 18 says, And you shall remember the Lord your God. For it is he who gives you power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers at as it is this day. Lord, we pray the scripture according to the word of God, the prayer of power of God's power of wealth and heritage. We pray Psalms, Psalms 112, Psalms 112 verse 1 through 3. Psalms 112 verse 1 through 3. And King David says, praise the Lord. Lord, we praise you today. Blessed is the man or woman who fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his commands. It says his descendants will be mighty on the earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. It did not say might. It said will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in his house and his righteousness endures forever in Jesus name. We pray scripture according to the word of God that those who fear the Lord and who delight in his commandments in obedience may the power of God's wealth and heritage be manifested by the authority of Jesus Christ. We pray according to Ecclesiastics, Ecclesiastics, chapter 5, verse 18. 
the 19. We pray this in Jesus' name. Here is what I have seen. It is good and fitting for one to eat and drink and to enjoy the good of his labor in which he toils under the sun all the days of his life, which God gives him, for it is his heritage. As for every man, that means people, the saints, to whom God has given riches and wealth and given him power to eat of it, to receive his heritage, and rejoice in his labor. This is the gift of God. God, we pray this scripture according to the word that the prayer of God's power of wealth and heritage, it is a gift given from God to the people, the people of God. So we pray this scripture according to the word of God in Jesus' name. The prayer of blessing for obedience, ending with the prayer of blessing for obedience, according to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1 through 14. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1 through 14. We pray this in Jesus' name. Now it shall come to pass if you did diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments which I command you today. That the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come up on you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord, your God. Blessed shall you be in the city and blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed, it says, shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground and the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle and the offspring of your flocks. Blessed shall be your basket in your kneeling bowl. Blessed shall be when you come in and blessed shall you be when you go out. We pray the blessing in the name of Jesus for obedience. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise up against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. Lord, we command the blessing in the name of Jesus Christ for obedience. The Lord himself will command the blessing on you and your storehouses and all to which you set your hand and he will bless you and the land which the Lord your God is giving you. The Lord, we command the blessing according to obedience. The Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself. Just as he swore to you. If you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. It says then all the peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they shall be afraid of you. Lord, let the blessing of the Lord come that the fear of the Lord may be displayed as a witness of the power of Jesus Christ blessing upon his people in Jesus name for obedience and walking in the way of the Lord in Jesus name. And it says, and the Lord will grant you plenty of goods and the fruit of your body and the increase of your livestock and the produce of your ground and the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. That means everything that you have. The Lord will open to you, Lord, may you open to us the good treasures, the heavens to give the rain to 
your land and in the season and to bless all the work of your hand. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. And the Lord, may this blessing come up on the people of God and overtake us. Will make you, he said, the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and not beneath. And if you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today and are careful, careful to observe them. So you shall not turn aside from any of the words which I command you today to the right or to left to go after other gods to serve them. May the blessing of obedience come upon the people of God, my God, that covers everything and even the good treasures of heaven open. Lord, may the scriptures that I've prayed for your people and remembering Jesus Christ so it breaks every bondage, every spirit of oppression and lack. In Jesus' name, it breaks and destroys discouragement and it brings light from the word of God, what he promised, what he will do. In Jesus' name, may the scriptures that I pray today, may it bless you richly. And may you meditate on God's word and his promises and walk in faith, reaching for Jesus, believing, cleaving to that which is good, Jesus Christ. Be blessed. My brothers and sisters, during the month that no one really wants to give thanks to Jesus Christ, be blessed and let us remember our reigning king during Christmas. Be blessed.